Welcome to the Capital Discussions Option View Education. Um, Tom Nunnemaker with Steve Papali from Option View. And uh, before we get started, a quick disclaimer the Cap Capital Discussions is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. You don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit or loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. And with that, just a reminder, this is educational <coughs> purposes only. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and pass the ball over to you, Steve. And uh, welcome back. It uh, hasn't really been that long. It was June you were, you were with us, so just just under two months ago. So welcome back. Well, thanks. It's uh, It's good to be back, Tom. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy Monday. And uh, boy, oh boy, I, I'm I'm just kind of coming down from the Olympics here. The, I mean, we're right dead and smack in it. And all I've been doing is, in fact, I got it in the background. So I know you're in Germany, Tom, and I'm not sure I've been watching exactly what's going on with the Germans, but swimming, we've been doing okay. But um, well, in America, so I follow the American <clears throat> stuff, so. Yeah, Phelps yeah, is doing amazing. I know. Well, he's he's yeah. I think he ended up with like 24 gold medals or something in his career. It's, it's, it's crazy. So anyway, I like to watch it. It's kind of in the background. All when I happen to be working out of the house, I kind of have it going. And anyway, I'm kind of getting all my fix on that. So anyway, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name again is uh, Steve Papelli, and uh, as Tom said, I've been here one of one or two other times. It's always nice to be here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, butterflies, and um, what I'm going to do is go over uh, two, the two butterflies that that I trade. Um, one is kind of a standard equidistant butterfly, um, which is basically the generic butterfly, and then the second one is a is a broken wing butterfly. I know that's sort of become popular lately. Um, at least I've been hearing a lot more about it. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just sort of compare and contrast these two, talk briefly a little bit about um, how to set these up, some of the the characteristics of these butterflies. And then if we have time, um, you know, we'll model it out a little bit. I got my software up here and um, and we'll kind of model things out and, and, and show how some of these look on the on the model. So let me kind of move through. I probably don't need to do this, so I can probably skip through it, but Discover Options is an option education provider. Uh, all the information presented is just for educational purposes. So, uh, you know, before I get started, let me just do a real brief <clears throat> bio. I don't know if people really know who I am, but I've been with the Discover Options program here for, gee whiz, Jim knows for sure. I think it's been about nine years now, maybe eight or nine years. It's been a while. But <clears throat> my experience in options goes back way back to 1986. Um, I started out as a floor trader at the Chicago Board Options Exchange and uh, traded in the SPX. And did that really um, throughout the, the 80s and the 90s and uh, around 2000 um, and was a market maker, uh, stood in the pit all day and really watched uh, that pit kind of evolve from a very small crowd when I got started. There was probably about 10 guys in there, um, maybe two brokers and eight market makers, 10 market makers maybe. To when I left, there was probably uh, 150 people in there. It was pretty crowded, so it really grew, obviously, the product, very popular. Anyway, I did that and then went upstairs, managed uh, a whole bunch of traders, upstairs uh, options traders, mostly some stock guys, and then continued to begun to trade off floor uh, throughout the early 2000s. Um, uh, and then in 2004, set up a uh, the electronic option trading system in the euro dollar pit for the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange from a, a market maker over there. So we got that all set up and we became market makers. So the reason I say that isn't really anything other than um, I've been in this business a long time and <clears throat> I've seen a lot of uh, option trading and seen this business morph really um, from 
a very inefficient business to an efficient business and really from a business that favored the guy standing in the crowd to the business now that favors people like all of us that are retail traders, price takers um, with tight markets, efficient markets. So really we have a, a, a really advantage almost in how we trade over the market makers. Uh, so anyway, that's me. Uh, I'm going to stop talking about me and get in butterflies. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to get into uh, the standard butterfly. I'm going to talk briefly about the structure and the adjustment. And then we'll just do the same thing with the broken win. We'll do, we'll do structure and adjustment. <clears throat> so here's our standard butterfly. Uh, <laughs> we have the antenna, we have the thorax, we have the eye and the, all the rest of that. So there's your standard butterfly. Um, yeah. Um, if you go to the butterfly pavilion in Denver, Colorado, you'll see all these kinds of butterflies, but we're not talking about those butterflies. Obviously we're going to talk about option butterflies. So what's a lowdown? <clears throat> when we put on these standard butterflies, these equidistant butterflies, uh, generally we're looking a for a market that's range bound. Okay, these are magnitude of move um, strategies typically, not necessarily uh, directional, although we can set them up directionally. Um, <clears throat> in our mentoring program, we, we spend a lot of time going over this. Uh, we employ this or teach us as part of a non-directional strategy approach. Um, but it really it really leans, relies on sort of a range bound expectation. We need to get into that center of the butterfly, the way the thing is structured. Um, we make money on these things based on theta. I mean that the law at the end of the day we're collecting time decay. We expect or we we can forecast and predict pretty accurately how these options decay and that's our that's our profit center um, <clears throat> they are short vega we can make money on volatility falls but typically that's not something that we're necessarily uh, banking on um, because volatilities go up and down but our profit is on theta uh, these are popular obviously these strategies have been around a long time um, contrary to what I told my clerk back when I was a trader in the old days uh, that I did not actually invent this. Um, it's been around forever. So uh, a great, a really forgiving strategy. It does very well in all kinds of different markets. Um, personally, I, I love this strategy. You can use calls, puts, or combos uh, or combinations in iron butterfly. So <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. They're all the same. If you set these up the same, they are all effectively the same. Uh, a call butterfly and a put butterfly are both debit strategies, or uh, yeah, debit debit spreads. Um, <clears throat> they look the same, hit the same strikes. They profile out the same. They behave the same. Uh, the iron butterfly profiles exactly the same. The only difference is the iron butterfly is 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 a credit spread. It effectively is a, an iron condor with the two center, the two center put and the short put and call strikes are sharing a strike. Um, but the three of them are the same. Uh, for today, we're just going to focus on one call butterfly. They're all the same. We could do any of them, but by experiences, uh, call butterflies tend to be the easiest to to play with. People get calls a little bit more than sometimes puts or irons and. And I think call butterflies, honestly, are the most quoted butterfly, probably the most liquid, just in terms of, you know, interest and tradability. Everybody's seen the call butterfly, at least from when I was trading uh, a lot more um, down there on the on the floor. And even um, they, they just seem to be quoted more. People are always quoting call butterflies, put butterflies rarely, and, and iron condors somewhere between the two of them. Structure. Uh, you have one in the money call, one out of the money call, and then the two at the money. Okay, and I'm going to base this on an at the money butterfly. Um, again, um, <clears throat> we can shift these butterflies up and down till you know any any which way you like. We'll kind of assume these are sort of an at the money one. So what you essentially do is is your long one in the money call spread and short one out of the money call spread. Uh, the strikes in this particular equibalance butterfly are um, equidistant. So if we're 10 points 
above the center strike on the in the money, we're going to be 10 points um, below on the outer, vice versa. So we're 10 up, 10 apart. This is a debit spread. Okay, this spread is always a debit spread. You're always buying that in the money call spread for a greater price than you're able to sell this out of the money call spread. Okay, so mathematically, it's always gonna be a debit spread. And the further apart the strikes, the greater the debit, okay? But the greater the profit range. And, can, and, and intuitively, that makes sense. If you start to spread these <clears throat> strikes apart, you're effectively buying that in the money spread for a greater and greater price, that thing's gonna go up proportionately more than our out of the money call spread is gonna go down. So our debits are gonna get greater and greater. But again, you've got, you can really cover a big range of profit outcomes if you do it that way, if you have the, if you have the, you know, the resources. As far as the Greeks are concerned, um, <clears throat> the, this particular spread is uh, short Vega, okay? Because we're short two at the money options, okay? And if we remember just on Greek 101, at the money uh, uh, options always have the greatest Vega. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a short Vega trade. Uh, long theta, okay? Ditto meaning that those at the money options have the greatest theta. So that's gonna cause our overall theta to be positive. Uh, it's delta neutral, and I put kind of, and the reason that I say that, and we'll discuss this a little bit more in a second, is because uh, in the equity options or even commodities or whatever you're trading, there's almost always a skew. And in equities, the way the skew is set up, a flat skew in the puts and more of a, a steeper falling off skew on the uh, call side, the way those skews operate causes our delta on the butterfly to be typically negative. Um, so it, sometimes it's more or less negative, it just depends on the skew itself, but um, we call it sort of delta neutral, but um, you can get some negativity in there based on skew. And it's a uh, short gamma, okay? And again, same reason is, is it short big and short theta is those at the money options have, a, have a, the greatest gamma. So that's gonna drive the gamma for the, the butterfly. As far as P&L is concerned, the max profit's always in these butterflies at the short strike, okay? Intuitively, we think about that and we can think about it in this way. The in the money call spread, if we settle right at that short strike, <clears throat> that in the money call spread is gonna finish exactly at its maximum profit, okay? It's gonna go out exactly at max profit and the out of money call spread's gonna go to zero, okay? So that's the ideal scenario for us as a butterfly buyer, that would be the best. And we see that in our graph with that high spike right at the center. Uh, as far as the, the P&L goes, uh, it's the difference the other way you mathematically or uh, dollar wise, you think of it as difference between the strikes, less whatever the debit is. So if I've got 20 point strikes uh, and I figure out what the, the margin is or the cost is or the, or the uh, value between those strikes and then I subtract my debit, that's gonna be whatever the max profit I can take out of the butterfly. Um, <clears throat> the max loss is just the debit. So whatever I buy this thing for, it, that's all I can lose, okay? Assuming that I don't do any uh, adjustments to break the structure a part of this thing or do anything on uh, the max loss is the debit. And then the break even are just the upper strikes and the lower strikes plus or minus whatever the debit is. So you just kind of, it, it kind of, if it's a debt, it's always a debit in this case. So it, it's always inside those two strikes, uh, which is gonna be the break even based on whatever that debit is. Um, and then some other kind of little tidbits, I guess. Um, these things can be placed directionally, like I said, you don't have to place these butterflies right at the money. You can place these above the market, uh, even below the market. Um, <clears throat> typically, when, 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 when I talk to um, students in our program, as I suggest that this is probably a good strategy if you're a directional trader as a bullish um, strategy, simply because these are short vega, and as the markets tend to rise, generally we see Vegas tending to fall off a little bit or volatilities tend to fall off. So um, they work well as bullish, but 
Um, these are really robust strategies. For those of you that trade butterflies, I'm not telling you anything new. Um, they really they really withstand uh, volatility moves and 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 the moves uh, pretty well. Obviously, um, it's based on you know magnitude of move and things like that, but they really are pretty robust. Uh, and again, we we alluded to this vertical skew issue just a minute ago. Um, the vertical skew will affect the delta, and again, it's it's generally short in the equities. Um, we can adjust this. And we do adjust this uh, within the certain constrictions. Um, we can either buy deltas, just outright buy deltas, uh, calls, whatever, uh, or we can slide the whole butterfly up. So if we've got a short delta that we're not comfortable with and we want to bring that delta in a little bit, by shifting the entire butterfly upward, that uh, tends to bring more positive delta in. So those are the two ways we tend to adjust. I uh, put in here no legging, please. Uh, <clears throat> butterflies are a very common and popular strategy. There's no real reason to leg into these things unless you're a technical trader and you're 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 legging in this based on on information, you know, technical information. But typically, quote the butterfly is a butterfly. You're going to get a good you're going to get a good market for it, even in the SPX. Um, Vega versus Delta Hedge. Um, because the butterfly tends to be negative, or uh, as a, it, because the butterfly is always a negative Vega trade, we t I tend to suggest to our guys um, just lean a little bit short Delta. And the reason I I tell them that is because if the volatility, we know that as markets go up, volatility tends to go down, and as markets go down, volatilities tend to go up. So we have exposure on Vega. By steering or leaning short a little bit of delta, we tend it helps hedge that short vega exposure. So if markets do sell off and we get and volatilities go up and we get hurt a little bit on our vega, by leaning a little bit short delta, um, <clears throat> it tends to hedge that a little bit. Obviously, if markets rally and uh, our short delta is going to hurt us, but again, in a normal environment, we expect IVs to go down, so our vega tends to make some up. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not designed to be perfect, but it does withstand some movement and helps us offset some of that vega. So that's a suggestion. Um, all right, so that's what I got on the regular. So broken wing. Um, <clears throat> So there's a little guy with a broken wing, I guess. How does it fly? All right, we talk about uh, the, the broken wing. All that is is an unbalanced distance between strikes. So we have a, a standard butterfly, and we end up moving one or both, well, one of the strikes up or up more, further away from the center strike. It's really sort of a risk shift strategy. Okay, so we're taking risk from one side of the butterfly, and we're moving it and exaggerating on the other side, okay? Uh, it can be, it, 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 it's really a short call spread or a short put spread inside or combined with a butterfly. So we have a regular butterfly, and when we have a broken wing, really what we're doing is we're attaching a short call spread uh, or a short put spread, depending on which one you're trading. What that effectively uh, creates is, um, little risk on one side or no risk potentially on one side, depending on the, the size of the debit or credit, and a very magnified risk on the other side. And for those of you that trade these, you'll, you'll get the graph where you have one side that's flat forever <clears throat> based on that credit or, or debit spread. And then we have our typical pyramid where we have our max profit always at the short strike. And then we have that other side that goes down, 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 falling off a cliff, way below what our standard butterfly would go, um, down, you know, an exact, a much lower potential loss than a standard fly. Um, these trades tend to be, or I put in here, can be directional trade. They tend to be directional trades. Uh, people that trade these butterflies um, usually have a bias one way or the other. Uh, we have a guy here, Frank. Fahey that does a lot of these. I used to trade quite a bit of these. 
Um, and he's, he puts these on when he's nervous about sell-offs and he'll have this thing set up as a call fly with a broken wing. So he's, he's essentially got like zero risk if the market, you know, crashes. I mean, he's a, <clears throat> he's an old floor guy like me, I guess. And, uh, after the crash of 87, which, uh, we'll date her. So we both, <laughs> we're both there. Um, we, uh, downside risk scares us and it never has left us since then. And, um, you know, so we're always afraid of the, the sell-off and I think just, you know, markets panic on the downside. Typically there, there, there isn't always a pain. There's rarely a panic on the upside. So anyway, that's how he does it. Um, let's see, can be done for, for a low cost or credit. So we, we kind of went there when you sell that extra, call spread and we'll model we'll model one of these out here one or two of these out real quick um you can do these for for very low cost um and sometimes you can even get a credit depending on uh you know the, the skews basically and how far you how big of a call spread or how big of a put spread you're willing to sell uh these are th uh, typically theta collecting strategies again um Based on where these things are set up, if you start going way out of the money with some of these things, uh, obviously then the theta tends to get a little bit less and less because uh, your stuff's so far away and all that. So all these theta Greek things tends to get a little muddy when you're dealing bro with broken wing. And then finally, uh, you can use calls or puts. We can use a broken wing call fly. Um, which I tend to, tend to use if I want unlimited on the upside and then the broken wing um, call spread or call butterfly. I forgot what I just call butterfly. If I, if I tend to be freaked out about the downside and I want no risk on the downside, the broken wing put butterfly. If I tend to want, you know, the, the straight line on the upside. So, and again, you can set these things up, uh, all over the map, way out of the money, way in the money, how big of a credit and how big of a debit and how big the payoff is going to be uh, obviously will depend on, on where those strikes are and what kind of credits and debits we're talking about. So the structure, something like this, you've got that one in the money again. I set this up as an at the money broken wing, but obviously you can slide these around any way you like. One in the money, two at the money, and then this one out of the money. And then this out of the money is, is further out. So we've effectively created this unbalanced butterfly uh, by virtue of selling an out of the money, in this case, call spread. So I've got this out of the money call that I would have that would be 20 points away. I'm going to sell that 20 point, str that strike, sell those calls, and then buy some calls, you know, that are 30 points out. Cheaper, less debit, maybe even a credit. Um, so there's my, there's my broken wing butter. And so I got it effectively sell a call spread to collect extra dollars. But, and as we pointed out earlier, there's greater risk in that direction. Okay. And the risk is a function of the width of the spread and the original butterfly itself. So you've got this, you know, this, this, this exaggerated risk and there's also margin now. So initially when we were trading butterflies, we never um, had to deal with margin because we didn't have, uh, it was debit. But now we've in introduced the, uh, we've introduced a call spread. So we now have, have margin um, or put spread and we don't have margin. Um, broken wing Greeks here, uh, I'm just gonna get blow through this real quick. Short Vega generally, again, uh, this depends on where you are relative to the at the money and where the strikes are. The longs and shorts are at relative to each other and relative to the at the money. Uh, long theta, usually delta, <laughs> depends. Uh, and then short gamma, uh, mostly, mostly short gamma. Uh, the max profit is at the short strike, always in a butterfly. Uh, it tends to be the difference between, in the, in the case of the call spread, call fly, between that lower strike and the center strike. Okay, that, that standard half of the butterfly. It's between those strikes uh, plus or minus the debit. Okay, 
Uh, and then the max loss is really the other side of the fly, the difference between the, um, the, the, the normal strike, if you will, uh, on the other side of the fly, and then the extended um, leg. So um, plus or minus the credit, and we'll, we'll model that out. Um, and then last thing, and then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set up the, 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 the thing here. Uh, marginal requirements due to short call or put spread. So you've obviously we, we mentioned that real quick. Um, it works best on uh, slower moving markets. You know, butterflies um, always work best in kind of drifting or ice. You know, a, a market's got a, a defined, a well defined uh, non directionality, I guess, if you will, a uh, small magnitude of move unless you're doing these things directionally. And even though sometimes you want it to move kind of gradually up towards that. Uh, and again, we can use the call broken wing butterfly if we're worried about downside risk and use the put if we're worried about upside risk. And I mean, big risk. Now we're not trying to target the high, the, the max target on our butterfly spread. Uh, we're worried about a gigantic. We just don't want to worry if the market, you know, crashes. Um, and then as far as adjustments, I'm not going to get, too heavily into this, but um, you may be able to buy back. And, and again, I'm, I'm talking about call spread here, just for sake of the conversation. We may be able to buy uh, the call spread back in the case of a, a broken wing call butterfly uh, to lock in the profit and shut down any directional risk. So if we sell a call spread for you know $200 credit, for example, and now we've got a broken wing butterfly, and we're able to buy that thing back. For a hundred bucks, um, we can create our original, not you know, standard butterfly, and we can sometimes put those on for zero, or 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 even sometimes a small credit, and we're out of everything. The worst that's going to happen is whatever credit we took out of it, and um, we don't have to worry. We can just let that thing go if we want, or we can try to sell it. Um, so there's different ways to adjust these things. Uh, finally, flat skews on puts may make a credit tough. Uh, by going out, the idea of extending further and further out of the money to uh, bring the credit in, uh, in terms of selling a credit spread, um, is pretty easy on calls. Relatively, it tends can be a little bit tougher on puts just because the skews are so flat, and puts hold their value strike after strike after strike. So sometimes it, it can be a little more challenging there. So. Let me just do this here. I know we're at the bottom of the hour. I, I want to keep this down to about 40 minutes. So um, here's our uh, live option view um, <clears throat> screen here, and I am going to go to the SPY. Now I, 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 you know, I'm trying to decide what to use. I hear RUT, I hear SPX, um, but I'm going to go with SPY. Uh, not because I want to be difficult, but it's just, it's got lots of good strikes. It's just really filled in. Sometimes when you get some of these others, you get um, sporadic sp strikes. Uh, as far as setting these things up, the very, various people have different opinions on far, how, in terms of time, when to set a butterfly up. Uh, we always talk about, uh, as far as the standard butterfly is concerned, I like to go out about 30 to 45 days in that range. Um, <clears throat> the reason for that is it seems to be in a nice sweet spot as far as theta and gamma are concerned. Um, if you start to go out really far away, uh, they're much easier, they tend to be easier to manage because gamma tends to be smaller. Okay, so we don't have to deal too much with delta changes given movement and underlying. But the theta tends to be relatively slow. Uh, it's a great approach if you don't have a lot of time to manage and you want something that's a lot smoother in terms of its risk reward profile, but tends to be slow in developing. Um, if you go too close, your theta can accelerate and you can make lots of theta, but the, the, the payoff for that is the high level of gamma in which case you've got to be, you know, ready to make an adjustment fairly quickly. So anyway, we just found over the years, um, this tends to be a pretty good happy medium. There's some other issues involved in terms of rolling and how we manage trades that point to the same time. But, 
But this is where we're going to go, and we just happen to have this one month here of September, which is um, 33 days, so it works out okay. So if I were just to set this thing up, and I'm not going to... I'm not going to play around too much with different. Uh, uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to kind of pull a butterfly out here and not, um, you know, just almost at random here. So we'll go with this one. So we've got the t you know, the the 219 is is pretty close to the at the money. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll just go a couple of strikes around it and create this equidistant standard garden variety call butterfly. Okay, and I've got this thing on five times, and you can see here it's costing me $360. Okay, so for folks who are fairly new to options, I'm a big advocate of the ETFs. May not be the SPY, maybe you've got the IWM if you like a RUD or whatever, I don't know, but um, ETFs are a great, great product to trade. Um, you can get into these for fairly low cost, and they're going to basically give you a great education in managing option strategies for very low cost. I mean, I've done five of these, and it's cost me 350 bucks. Now I got some uh, commissions and stuff, but still. Um, so here we are. We got this thing. You can see we're short some delta here. Okay, again, we've got the skew here, and you can see the skew is pretty pronounced. All right, um, we got these 11.6 on the MIV here on the put. The at the money sitting around 9.6, and we've got the out of the money call 8.1. So we've got a, a, a pretty pronounced skew. This this is a little higher than normal, I think. Um, and why that is, I mean, maybe it's maybe the markets are nervous. We're coming into you know um, a seasonally weak time here in September, October. So um, the puts probably going to hold value here high. So anyway, that's what we have. So we got this skew, we got this delta, there's our gamma, there's our theta, whopping $3 a day. So you can go out, you can't probably go to Starbucks and buy anything with that, but nonetheless, it's three bucks. And we're short a little bit of Vega. Okay, so here's our thing. Obviously no margin because we're not, it's a debit spread. And, and, and here's what we have. We've got the max profit right here. We can make $1,000, more than 1,000 bucks if this thing sits right here. Uh, which is a nice rate of return for 33 days. Okay, and I won't get into all the chart and the graph here. What I want to look at mostly is the is the parity graph, really, uh, the structure of the butterfly. This is a standard butterfly. We can see that the max profit is going to be right at the short strike, right at the 219 strike. And again, at that 219 strike, <clears throat> guess what happens? Our 216, 219 call spread is going to go out at its max profit, okay, at three bucks, and this thing is going to go out at its at zero. So we're going to keep the credit we might receive on this call spread that we sold five times. We're going to make the max profit on this call spread that we bought five times, and at the end of the day, we're going to walk out with our maximum profit. When I do the math, it comes out to be probably around 1,100 bucks. And so we can set this thing up any, you know, I mean, if I'm bullish, you know, I can set, you know, I can target, shoot this thing. And, you know, if I think the market's going up to 222, I can sh set my short strike at 222. If I don't want to spend 350 bucks, I can tighten this up and bring these, this five lot in and, you know, make it a little tighter and make it a little bit um, cheaper. Oops. So now I only spent 170 bucks. Okay, my deltas, my Greeks are going to shift a little bit, but now I've spent less, um, and you know I've got less in terms of profit potential because we said that the wider the spread, the, the more profit potential, but the greater debit, um, but less money, you know, um, and I can I can play around with this, you know, till the cows come home if I feel like it. So anyway. So that's the that's a standard equidistant call spread. It's a great strategy. We use it. We teach it. Um, I love it. Anyway, broken wing. Um, so say we got this thing, and I'm sitting here with this strategy right here, 
and I've got $175 credit, and I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and try to create a broken wing call butterfly. I'm freaked out. I'm Frank Fahey, and I'm afraid the market, I'm thinking the market's going to crash. And next, any day, we're going to have a 25% sell-off, okay? So what am I going to do? One thing I can do is I can create, a, I can sell a call spread. So I can start to go here and turn this long five lot in uh, and make it, let me try and see how far out to go. Um, we just kind of play with this. So now I've sold a $5 call spread. <clears throat> Okay, I took my long five here, I sold it and I bought five here. So I sold this call spread effectively for about 40 cents, give or take. So now, guess what? I've got a credit here of $45, okay? I've got gross margin of $500 because I've got an embedded $5 call spread. So I've got a post margin, but I collect based on all these debits and credits, I'm collecting 45 bucks. So that credits towards my margin. So I got a net margin of 455 bucks. Now, I can sleep at night because if the market crashes tomorrow morning, <clears throat> I'm only gonna make 45 bucks, but I don't have to worry about, you know, doing any adjusting and not to worry about some crazy, you know, just you know, whatever. I'm I'm done. I, I've got complete risk, no risk on this trade on the downside. So um that's the beauty of the butter of the broken wing butterfly. And obviously I just set it up this way just because it's at the money. Um some people can you can shift this thing all over the place. Um you can make you can move this thing up and have the you know the uh, have even more, you know, protection, um, even if we rally up a little bit. Now, obviously, uh, we're sitting right under the strike, and we, we, we want this thing to, um, you know, sit right at the strike. Obviously, what's happening here is if we start to sell off, we've got some issues. Um, we've got a, you know, we've got a exaggerated loss on the upside. Um, the trade-off, like we said, is um, by by eliminating the risk on the upside, uh, we take on more risk on the downside. So um, we have adjustments to do if the market goes up from here. Um, you know, you know. Again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too much into all that. You know. What people, a lot of times what people do is they would set this butterfly up and they would have the short strike way up here or right way up here. And then um, we have lots of room for this thing even to run up a little bit because you could imagine if this butterfly had been shifted, the market would be sitting like right over here now. So we could go all the way here, all the way here. Maybe the market goes up here and we get real lucky and we go to the bank if it sits right here. Um, but if it keeps going past our sweet spot, obviously we've got we've got issues. So this is a great strategy if you want to do some you know, target shooting in terms of strikes um, for rel you know for a, a credit or a small debit. You can set this thing up uh, above the market, have the market go up, creep up towards that strike that you're looking at, um, and if it can get there in a slow and methodical pace, you can really make some good money if it sits into that sweet spot. Uh, and if the market turns, you know, ugly, sells off, you don't have to do anything. You just take your, whatever your credit is. Again, obviously, the risk here, the trade-off is if the market goes up a lot, you got to make the adjustment. Um, and uh, there's lots of different ways to do that. There's lots of different protocol um, to decide when it's time to do that adjustment but um but that's what we you know that's what that's that's the cool thing about this so um and then the puts the same thing i won't i won't uh well I, I, we're getting here kind of long in the tooth here with the time but i want to spend too much more time but you you do the same thing here um you know with with the put you could you could set this up uh puts are puts are basically um the flip over, 
of the call. There's our equidistant put. Okay. That's right, right? Did I do that right? Yeah. It just looks unbalanced for some reason. I think that's just an optical illusion. 17, 19, 21. 17, 19, 21. Yeah, so, that's it, yeah, it just, the line looks, I don't know, for some reason, maybe my eyes are, it looks weird, but it's just, that's it's just how the graph. Commissions. Well, the right side leg, for some reason, looks like it's just a tiny bit, but it's it's balanced. That's just uh, maybe just whatever. Um, you know, so you got, so in order to make this, um, you know, the unbalanced or the broken wing, uh, this would be the situation where I'd be freaked out if we, you know, melt up. But I want to just point this out here real quickly um, that on this particular, can you see this vertical skew here is much flatter. Well, it actually it's fairly steep, but we're going to have to go a lot further out or at least a little bit further out to get that credit. We're still in here in the debit situation. So we'd have to go an extra strike on the put spread to now we've got the debit. So um, we got to go an extra strike and then we're, we're sitting here. Now we've got the flip over. Now I can rest assured I'm, I'm, the anti Frank. I'm, you know, some other guy. My fear is well, I'm afraid we're going to melt up, uh, melt up 25% tomorrow. So I don't have to worry about that on the upside. So, um, so I can manage this put and I can manipulate these puts anyway. And again, I've set this up with the at the money, but you can move these around way out of the money um, and have it, you know, have, have yourself tons of room where you would have, you know, the market. You know, way down here, and I could rally and or sell off, sell off a little bit, try to hit the sweet spot. Obviously, if we sell off a lot with this strategy, because we are short that put spread, we're going to have some issues. We got to manage through it, but but uh, good strategy, and good stuff. So I'm going to bring back the PowerPoint here, and that is it. That is what we have. Those are the two strategies. Um, the standard equidistant and then the broken, you know, the two broken wings, the sort of the broken wing call, the broken wing put, and kind of the pros and cons to each. I think they're both great. Um, you know, they both have their their role. Um, some guys like one more than others, and that's fine. Um, so so that's what I got. And uh hey. Steve, did you see George's question? Yeah. He said, do you condorize a butterfly no. to the direction of the underlying? Uh, con you mean, is condorize I think like butterfly. rolling up half of it and turning to it the into direction? a condor. Oh. Yeah, so just, I, yeah, just rolling up half of it. I don't. I don't. We, we use a little bit of a different... Um, Adjustment strategy. There's like, and there's so many, there's there's several different ways to to do that um, to manage the risk. Uh, I mean, I, one of our guys might. I'm gonna have to check with maybe Steve or one of these other guys do that strategy. Um, no, mm -mm. that's not one that I do. I didn't see that. I don't, I'm not getting any questions here. So. Uh, if you go up on the WebEx thing at the top, you'll see a chat thing. Oh. But that's that was the only question. Okay. Good question. Yeah, so uh so thanks Steve. I, I personally love the uh broken wing fly. It's a great trade. Um easy to adjust, like you said. Very, very flexible, lots of premium to play with, so a lot of reasons to use that trade in your arsenal. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a good one. It's a good one. And uh it's become really popular. I don't know why. Maybe it's just maybe I'm just noticing it, you know. I don't know, you know, you don't notice the you know, the color blue and suddenly blue's everywhere. But um we started talking about broken wings a couple of years ago or something and man now it seems like they're everywhere. So yeah. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to join us and uh, talk about butterflies. It's uh, been enjoyable. We'll 
hope to have you back again. Well, my, my pleasure, Tom. It's great to be here. I hope everybody has a good day and good trading and, uh, you know, continued luck. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>